What's cracking Jump Nation family? It's your boy here, Roshi S, aka the Jump Rope Coach. Welcome back to the home of Jump Rope Fitness and Lifestyle people. Today, I've got a killer skipping tutorial for you. And I'm actually replying to a really cool comment from one of our followers, right? So he's asked the question like, when do you guys kind of, when do I kind of consider you coming out of that newbie stage, right? So he's wrote noob, so newbie, so beginner, to kind of like, yeah, intermediate stage, like how many consecutive jumps are required. Now in today's video, I'm gonna show you five ways, right? Where you guys can come out of that beginner look. So I'm gonna teach you that it's not all about consecutive skips, right? Because I've seen many a beginner do loads and loads of skipping, right? Without tripping, but they still have that beginner look. They just fall into bad habits. And obviously on this channel, if you know, and you've been following for a long time, this is all about looking slick, looking sharp, looking fluid. And I'm gonna show you five variations where we can change this right now, once and for all, okay? And I'm gonna take you through every single one of them. So what we're gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna take you through five variations, all right? The first thing is this. Most beginners who can skip for a very long time, consecutively, right? They'll have this look. And you've seen me talk about this a lot on this channel. Arms well out, elbows away from the body. And they can do this for a long time. And they generally, generally, in my opinion, will use the basic bounce a lot, okay? We're gonna change that. The first variation we're gonna do is basically change this to now the boxer step. We've got loads of tutorials on the boxer step, but if you wanna kind of have, or kind of get out of that newbie look and beginner look, you wanna kind of get to this level where we're sort of transferring the weight left and right. So I'm gonna exaggerate this movement now, staying on the balls of our feet, heels off the floor, right? Once you get into this kind of footwork pattern, you can then kind of mix it up, throw a few little toe kickouts, some high knees, some front straddles, some side straddles, yeah? And you can just have a little play around with your footwork. This, in my opinion, if you're gonna trip up doing this, but your form's good, your elbows are in, right? Everything looks tight, the arcs are nice and narrow, then you're well on your way to coming out of the newbie look. Not about being consecutive with it, obviously you wanna be as accurate as possible, but if you're gonna be tripping up, it's only because you're jumping a little bit off the floor, you're not flexing your knees like a beginner does, because even if they can do that consecutively 100 times, it does not mean they don't look like a beginner. The second variation is crossovers. Now, coming out of the newbie look, this is what I see most beginners doing, right, with crossovers. Let's say they're doing their basic bounce and they're accurate by doing it like this. And you see this a lot. Now, the question was, how many consecutive jumps are required to lose that beginner look? Now, again, a lot of beginners can do this for days, flexing their knees, arms wide, crossing, and it still looks beginner, all right? So what we're gonna try and do now is we're gonna kind of mix up this variation, go to our boxer step, again, heels off the floor, transferring the weight left and right, nice flex in the knees, you're looking nice and soft, bouncing on the floor, and then it's just boom, boom, right? The legs, the patterns, the rhythm of your feet should not change, it should look just seamless. Now this is hard, so it takes a lot of time, a lot of practice, and then you can kind of go into kind of like a high knee cross just to mix it up, which will increase the level. You can even run in, run a little run skip here and then hit the cross there, one, two, one, two. But we're trying to get out of this, okay? So basic bounce and big knee flexes, that's gonna take you guys out of the beginner look and making sure that you guys upgrade your skills. Third variation, guys, is side swings. Now, proper staple fundamental move in the skipping game, okay? Now, most beginners will be at basic bounce, hands go well away from their body, maybe hands are away from the body, they stop, sometimes don't jump, and if they do sometimes jump, it's almost kind of like a bit choppy like this, right? I'm just kind of exaggerating it, but they struggle with getting the timing right. So if you want to step out of that beginner stage, right, and have that look, remember it's not about consecutive jumps, it's about making sure you guys can try and get these moves done with the right form. So boxer step is the way forward, right? If you guys can get some side swings done with a boxer step, keeping your hands close to the body. You wanna make sure that it's all seamless. So like with the crossovers that I was showing you before, the boxer step continues. One, two, open. My hands stay close, dominant hand on top. So that's my left hand and it literally flows, all right? So left, right, open. To make this a little bit easier, right? To kind of understand people, man, you wanna hear the sound of your rope hitting the floor. So you wanna make sure that that action of the tapping of the rope is the same every single time. So when you're opening the rope, you're already sort of in midair, ready to jump over it with that boxer step. And for me, this is the way you can come out of this sort of stage, this beginner stage, keeping that tapping going. And a really good tip here is try not listen to any music, especially when you are starting to skip. If you can try and do it without music, 
listen to the sound of the rope, listen to the sort of the rope cutting the air, clipping the ground, all this sort of stuff is going to heighten your senses. So give that a go. Trust me, if you do this long enough, you practice long enough, you're going to trip. That's normal. This is a journey. We're all on the same journey. We start at the same place, but if you can get out of these bad habits, keep it looking smooth. Trust me, you'll be at the intermediate stage very, very quickly. The fourth variation, guys, is the south pole side swing. Now, this is not much of a beginner move. I get that. But when beginners do try it, for example, they'll be here, very similar to the side swings. Arms go really wide apart, basic bounce. And it's going to be very similar to what I'm said in the last point, all right? We want to make sure that everything stays close. I want to feel like, well, I want you to feel like you're kind of in a box, not too rigid, right? Never too rigid, but you feel like everything is tight and everything you do is with efficiency. So nothing stretches out away from you. Nothing is being whipped open for the rope, like by your arm. It's all in the wrist, a little bit of forearm. And what I want you to do is box a step, take it really slowly, here, here, all right? Exaggerating this movement right now. Start with your dominant side first. We're just taking, for me anyway, the right hand comes across my body, left hand still stays planted down here, and that's still working. When the right hand comes across, it doesn't come away from my body, it stays close. This thumb turns over, this hand turns over, and we whip the rope open. That's from the, from the sort of stronger side. Then when you get comfortable with that, I want you to feel like you can go to the other side naturally, all right? This all comes from the wrist, this move, right? We're trying to separate this rope but maintaining our footwork. And like I said, and keep saying, this is not about consecutive jumps now, right? If you wanna lose the beginner look, it's not about being able to do a thousand jumps, it's about doing 10 perfect jumps, right? If you're gonna trip, you're gonna trip. You're gonna learn from the mistakes, you're gonna understand why you're tripping very, very quickly. Your, your brain, your body, you're gonna figure it out. So give this a go. If you wanna make it a bit harder, you can then start to sort of add in some high knees. And then as you get comfortable, you can speed it up. And again, just listening to the rope, hit the floor, whip through the air, make sure that you can get those whips done with your wrists and not flinging the rope open with your arms and looking like most beginners do. Fifth and final variation is double unders. Now, most beginners, if they can hit some double unders, okay, they will probably do it like this, okay? So it'll be, okay, here or, and then they'll do it until they trip or they won't have a lot of control over the rope or their body, their posture. You get my drift, okay? So what we're gonna try and do now, what I'm gonna try and teach you is a ladder technique and also a kind of wrist or rope control technique, which I always find works really well with my clients and anyone that I teach, okay? What we're gonna try and do is when you do take off for the double under, we're just gonna slow the rope down. And you're gonna try and go to a, a nice chilled boxer step, all right? This is how you're gonna lose that look. Now to get this done, I want you to feel like you're sucking in your abs, you're kind of pulling in, pulling in the core muscles, all right? We're gonna try and engage these core muscles. When you take off now, I wanna feel, I feel anyway, that my toes are kind of lower than my heels. That's gonna stop me from doing this, right? I don't wanna feel any flexion in my knees. I wanna take off and I feel like my toes are facing the ground. It probably won't look like that, but that's the feeling. That will make sure my legs take off nice and straight. And then when you land, you land soft, but then you stop rotating with the rope, that's really key. Once you stop rotating with the rope, the momentum naturally will bring it around, give you enough time to set your feet, and then you can sort of start skipping again. So, just like that. That's the drill. That's gonna get you out that beginner look. We don't want these arms coming away from us. We don't wanna be generating the speed or the doubles with our shoulders or rotator cuffs. It's all powered by the wrists. Make sure your elbows are back. Make sure they're kind of close to your side, not rigid. And then, then to kind of like up it, we'll do two, back to normal, big deep breaths. And then three, one, two, three, control the rope. And then four, one, two, three, four. Final point to make sure this looks even slicker is keeping our feet grounded or rooted to the same spot. If you start to shift, come off the middle or come off where you started, that is when you're gonna struggle. That's when it's gonna be hard to kind of keep the symmetry, keep your arms in line. So to lose the beginner look once and for all, especially with doubles, is control. Engage your core, focus on something in front of you. And just make sure you stay in the same spot.
so that about wraps it up people hope you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up that'd be really useful for me and allow this channel to grow and reach more and more people out there as we said we're taking the cardio world by storm and i want you guys to join us hit the links below use rush 10 for 10 percent discount believe me man this is the way to do your cardio this is the way to get your heart rate up and feel better about yourself and it's amazing for your mental game as well so don't sleep on it hit the subscribe button again if you have any more questions leave them in the comments down below and we'll try and get it done for you and i'll see you in the next video so take care of yourself skip the treadmill stay safe peace I was the knight in shining armor in your movie would put your lips on mine and love the aftertaste now